blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Um, hi, I'm Kai Pinkerton, the community pastor and one of the elders here at the Mount. Um, Ryan Fontenot is our lead teaching pastor who usually preaches here uh, most Sundays. Um, he is, we gave him a extended time off, uh, really more, it's, we call it a sabbatical, but um, a little more than 30 days to just refresh, um, man, to take a, not a break, but to, to slow down with running, you know, six years because for we we're praying for long-term, you know, health and in ministry, um, like any workplace, it can be heavy and, and, uh, burdensome in a, in a great, great way. Uh, we want, um, wanted to give him that time. And so we're excited about that. Um, so he is almost halfway in through that, but just be praying for Ryan and his family as a time to just really refresh and Man, no expectations from the church on him to just be with the Lord and have some time with his family. And I think he's been able to do that so far. We haven't really talked, so I'm assuming things are good. Um, but today, um, so I led our family dedication time because our children's minister, Chris Weiniger, and his wife, Kristen, had their baby yesterday morning around 12.31 a.m. So yeah, we can give a hand for that. Praise the Lord for a new birth. I think he was trying to have the baby soon enough to get in on family, de family dedication with his kid, but I don't know. I don't see him here this morning, so I'm not sure. Um, but they're doing well. Um, baby Haddon, Haddon James Weiniger. So seven pounds plus, great little baby boy. So just pray for them as well. Um, but exciting. What a great, a great morning already uh, that we've had. And, and we are going to be in the, uh, the book of 1 Peter. So if you have your Bible with you um, or want to turn on your Bible. Um, we're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 2. If you need a Bible, um, there's one hopefully in a seat underneath uh, close by. I think it's page 1015 is where we'll be. So 1 Peter chapter 2. Rob spoke, uh, preached last week. Um, I'm going to back up just a little bit only to get kind of like a, almost as like a runway for us to take off because I think for it to make sense and to get the full picture of where we're going to talk today, starting in verse 13, uh, it, it'll help. So Rob last week spoke about really two, 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 two things for us to take away. One is who we are in Christ and really why we are in Christ. And, and it spoke of in verse, in verse nine, a uh, somewhat familiar verse, but it says, but you are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. I mean, Peter is speaking to believers and he's saying, man, like you are, we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a really high view of, of believers from God's perspective, what Peter is saying here, but for what purpose, right? Like for, for what purpose? And we if you keep reading, it says, that we may proclaim the excellencies of him, right? That we may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. Man, there's a reason why we have this high calling. There's this, like, Peter gives us like this identity check, if you will, no matter who we are, but it's for a purpose. It's so that we may proclaim the excellencies of him. And we, then we start in verse 11 and Peter uses this word beloved. And it, Really, if you, if you got to look into that, that's really him starting almost like a new section in his letter, um, beloved. And he goes on, he says, I urge you as sojourners and exiles. Some of your translations may say strangers and aliens. I urge you as these, as a stranger, as an alien, as an exile to abstain from passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. 
Peter again is really kind of speaking into an identity issue for us that, but he stayed, he's calling us sojourners and exiles. I don't try to figure out why is he calling us that? Um, or you may, in your other translation, stranger or alien. There's a couple of different ways we can take this. Uh, we know at the Christian's um, during this time had been dispersed out and so uh, from some persecution early in Jerusalem and they were out in different towns and cities and maybe thought of themselves as exiles. That's not really what I think believe the text is referring to here is more of a metaphorical um, spiritual sense that we are exiles in a spiritual sense from our home with God here on this earth. We are aliens and strangers here on this earth. Seeing it as not our home does change our perspective. And so sometimes we'll say that, oh, well, this place isn't our home. What is our temporary home? That's the word sojourner. It means like this is our temporary residence. We just got to remember that it's temporary, right? Um, I don't know if you've ever felt out of place anywhere. Um, I mean, maybe it's you moved to a new town and you took a while to kind of find your place or as a kid into a new school. And man, like it's it just, you feel a little bit out of place. You do feel kind of like a stranger there. You don't know the lingo and the jokes and the words and the phrases. Maybe you're new here today and we're, you're, you feel a little bit like you're a, you know, a stranger here. You don't know other people. There, I'm from Amarillo originally and Amarillo, if you know much about Amarillo, you're from Amarillo, it's, you know, West Texas. Moving from Amarillo to North Dallas in high school was a little bit of a culture shock for me. Couple, you know, I would say a couple, maybe more like a decade difference, it felt like, you know, it's like, we didn't even get movies in Amarillo until years later, I think. And it was just different, right? It just felt different. Coming to North Dallas, I'm like, whoa, this is different. I felt, you know, but I adjusted and at some point, a few years later, I ended up moving back to Amarillo. And now all of a sudden, people in Amarillo talk different. They seem weird. Like, they, like though I used to say and talk and use phrases that, that came from West Texas, now I've been cityfied in North Dallas. And I no longer use some of those terms and words. And I'm like, Dad, why are you saying that? And I'm like, but man, we, we adjust to our culture, right? Like, how quickly do we do that? And in some ways, that's not bad. In some ways, that's good. But if we're not carefully... Instead of being in the world, we actually truly become of the world, right? So Peter here is talking, he's talking to us. He's like, hey, remember that you're just temporary residents here. Our citizenship, like Philippians 3.20 says, our citizenship is in heaven. Okay, we need to remember that. So I'm, again, I'm laying the, here the, the foundation, or if you will, our runway as we take off. Uh, verse 12 starts to... Uh, give us a little bit of the answer here to how are we to live as strangers and aliens. I think that's the true challenge is, okay, I get it. Temporary resident here. Okay. There's more to come. Well, how are we supposed to live here and now, right? As an alien, if you will, verse 12 says, keep your conduct among the Gentiles or unbelievers um, honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. We want to live honorably, right? And glorify God. That's kind of take some here. Just again, as we're, as we're just beginning, like how do we conduct ourselves as aliens and strangers here? How do I live? How do I have family? I work and I have soccer teams and I workplaces and schools and communities and all the stuff that's part of our lives. How do we do that as a stranger and an alien? You know, well, we live honorably. We conduct ourselves with honor. We live honorably to glorify God. So if you, have, if you take notes, whatever, I would write that down. But okay, so, so now the question is, how do we live honorably and glorify God in our lives? I, uh, I can't remember if this was from a sermon or something I'd listened to at one point, but they were someone was teaching from the Bible and they, they used these letters Y B H next to in the margin when they were a commandment or instruction or something was given to you. And it was yes, but how, uh, it's just something that stuck with me for whatever reason that sometimes like I'll, I'll write that in my Bible. And usually the Bible tells you the how, but sometimes it's like when we read be holy as I am holy, that was in first Peter. We already went through some of that. It's like, yes, like I get that, God. Like I see we're supposed to live like for you, but how, how do we do that, right? I mean, that's in the scripture too, but we need to wrestle with and come to that like realization. Okay, I need to take action and, and there's, I need to look to see how I'm supposed to do that. 
So where we're going today is that but how piece, okay? Uh, let me pray for us, and then let's, uh, let's, let's get into this text together. Father, we love you. We thank you for today. I pray that you would speak, Holy Spirit, that you would teach and convict and uh, just help us understand your word this morning. Lord, I pray that as we talk about how we are to live, that you would give us wisdom and clarity, um, or you would give us the courage to maybe even live differently if you're calling us to that. Father, I pray that you would just be with, be with me now, be with us all now, to just hear, hear your word. Lord, you speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we're gonna jump into a text here that talks about submitting to the government. Everybody's like, woo. Presidential elections are hot on our, the press right now, right? Obviously, I, I'm not sure how many days left. I was told you can early vote tomorrow. Um, I think we have the big election day coming up in a week and a half or something like that. Uh, obviously, as Christians, we need to vote. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you who to vote for. You ready? I'm just kidding. We're not getting into that, but we are going to look at the Bible and what does the Bible say when it says we're to submit to authority and things over us. Uh, as I was getting ready, uh, you know, to preach and prepare and look at this, I was thinking back to the last time I had the honor to preach and it was, we were in our series, we are the church. And I was given the week on telling the church to submit to their leaders <laughs> Elder I was like, why? I think it's because I need to hear this. I'm think I'm guessing, you know, usually if you teach something, you get more out of it than anybody else. So I'm pretty sure I'm preaching to myself right now. Uh, but let me read before I, I jump farther in, let me read Matthew five sixteen as just another clarification text for men living honorably and glorifying God. And that people will see how we live, see our good works, if you will, and glorify God. Matthew five sixteen says, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your father who is in heaven. And let's live well, let's live honorably, let's do good so that people don't see good Kai, that they may see good in me that can only be from the Lord, right? Give glory to God. So our first, uh, I guess, example of, man, how are we to live honorably and glorify God? We're going to try to answer that question, how we do that. It comes um, as a submission to those in political office. One example Peter gives us, this is one way that we do this. Verse 13, it says, be subject or submit for the Lord's sake to every human institution whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. It says be subject for the Lord's sake to a few human institutions that you approve of, right? Yeah. No, it says every. That word every, the Greek word means every, like every kind, all, like we are to put ourselves, we are to be subject to and submit to every human institution. We're like, wait a second, I'm not sure if I can do that. So the Bible is pretty clear on obeying and submitting ourselves under authority. It's a system that's across the board. We do see examples biblically of what we may call civil disobedience, maybe, where if the government authority that we're under is, if, if obeying this authority makes me disobey God, then there's this, you see people in the Bible acting outside of that. We saw, and back in Exodus, there's midwives for the Hebrew women who are having babies. They were told, the midwives were told to kill the Hebrew males that were born. But thankfully, some, the midwives chose not to do that because obeying their authority in that sense would be disobeying God. Uh, we see uh, in Daniel, right, the three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they did not obey to, to o bow down to a golden statue. Um, that was because obeying the authorities there would mean that they had to disobey their God. But we're not talking about civil disobedience. That's kind of where we jump. We're like, I, you know, what we're seeing here in scripture is that, man, we're called to civil obedience, what does that look like? How do I, how do we live honorably there? Be subject for the Lord's sake. And this is not about us. 
It's not about you and me and our kids. You know, as much as we, we protect our family bubbles and I want to keep them safe and, and, and I want their future safe and I, and I get all that, but it's not for our sake, right? It's for the Lord's sake that we live honorably and even speak honor to those that we're under. Peter knows a little bit about this. He was under the reign and rule of Nero, okay? Nero was, was a, a guy kind of caught up in himself, um, really thought highly of himself to the point of trying to deify himself and wanted others to see him in a godlike manner. Uh, he was pretty particular about this and actually pretty paranoid about it uh, to the point that I think he had his mom killed, worried that there would be some problem with him being over everything. Uh, he was so worried that he had his brothers poisoned. He was very paranoid about it. He wanted, he had, so talking about following a leader of someone that you had a hard time going under his authority. This is the context in which Peter's saying, be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to the governors. And that's hard. I admit that's hard. How do we, how do we do this? Um, I have a couple, couple points for us to take. Instead of me just saying, and for myself and for all of us, submit to the government authorities, the political people above us, the officer, submit to that. Like how, how do we do that? We can't just be left with that. So here are some ways that we can do that. Number one, it's by honoring them, by praying for them. Okay, it's like, okay, I know that. Really? How much have we prayed this week, specifically, even for our mayor here, but obviously the presidential election, for those in political office over us? And what if we truly, like, regularly prayed for the salvation of our leaders? I'm convicted by that, right? Like, that's a way to honor them praying for their best, right? Praying that they would lead our country in a God honoring way. Be, like that's one way that we can live honorably is by praying for them. And another one there is by how you talk about them. Yep, it's in there, yeah. <laughs> I actually just hacked into all your Facebook accounts and deleted a whole bunch of stuff for you. Uh, no, I was talking with somebody and they're like, ooh, I'm, you know what? kind of need, I may need to go delete something they said. And I was like, you know, I'm not saying anything. I'm just like, what does the word say to us? Okay. So, um, but I mean, how do we live honorably though in this time when it's just slander, 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 slander? Oh, not for them. I'm not for them. I can't be for them. I can't be, I don't, I, can't, I don't agree with this. I don't agree with this. And it comes out if we're not careful, man, slanderous, if you will. And, or, you know, man, rather than how do we live honorably and glorify God, even in the political realm of things. We have to be able to do it. We pray for them, okay? We be careful about how we speak about them. It's okay to, not, it's okay to disagree with their policies and be disgusted by their conduct, but we don't like stoop to that level, if you will, because it doesn't honor them. It doesn't honor God. It, people don't see God and Christ in us by us not acting like Christ, right? So I... I I'm not on Facebook much, I occasionally. It's, I just don't think I have time, or I would. Um, my wife is, is on it some, and she's, she, uh, I love her. Um, she helps me, she filters, she's like, this is what I'm seeing out there, you know. Not any person's stuff, individually, no names shared. Um, but it's, it like made me wanna go to Facebook and like read some things, I'm like, oh my gosh, like we've lost our minds. Literally, like if I'm representing Christ, how is this honoring of God and of another person? Like it's, it's hard. I know we got to be what we're for, but let's focus on that, right? And what if people saw, and this is not a Kai Soapbox thing. This is what it says here that we need to live honorably. We're supposed to subject ourselves, submit to those in authority over us. Like that's tough, especially when we're treated maybe unjustly, or the people are hard to follow. Honor by not believing everything you read about them. That can be true. Do some fact checking before you instantly believe and pass on to others. There's just a lot of crazy stuff out there, you know? Um, I, was, I was taught this at, uh, when I was at a and I had a professor, I don't think knew the Lord at all, but he, he was like, don't believe everything you hear. 
I'm like, okay, I'm supposed to believe you. You're my professor. <laughs> um, but he's like, but it was just the counsel, if you will, to like, hey, you hear it? You hear maybe something being taught or whatever? Like, re- find out for yourself if that's true. Dig. Like, you know, and I was like, okay, that's true. Own that. Um, anyway, just be careful in that sense that in gossip or spreading things. Um, honor by not elevating them to the level of God. This one's interesting. Um, let me jump back in, in our text here. I'll go back to verse, I think I left off at 15, and I'll go through 17. Verse 15 says, for this is the will of God. Like how many times do we read that in scripture? It's in there some, but it's like, pay attention. This, this coming, this is the will of God. So what is it? That by doing good, you should put, the, put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. And why do we live honorably? Why do we strive to do good? Because it, makes, it silences the counter of that. Live as people who are free, verse 16. Not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants, as bond servants of God. And in verse 17, it says, honor everyone. Love the brotherhood. Love the believer, love the saint, love the church. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Peter's kind of almost taking a jab here that we knew Nero, he wanted people to fear him because he wanted to be looked at like God. Peter's telling his believers, we need to honor everyone, including the emperor. We need to love the church, the brotherhood. We fear God, right? We fear God. And then it's kind of like, oh, reminder, honor the emperor, do that, but we don't fear him in that way. Almost a jab, if you will. So how do we honor by not elevating them to the level of God? And God is the only one to be feared. He is the only one at that level. Don't elevate political leaders positively or negatively to the level of God, their people. Okay, we're about to elect a new president it's going to happen. We put ourselves in this situation. We have a couple people there to vote for and some more. Um, but it's going to happen. They're going to be the leader of the United States, a powerful country in the world. You know, man, one of the most powerful countries in the world. We have a king over the whole world, right? Let's put our hope in him. Not that we don't care. We obviously care. We need to live as Christians and live honorably and glorify him. And that means figuring out what we got to do to elect next and, or do our part. But we lose our minds sometimes. And, and I know we're, we're fighting for what we believe in. But man, let's, let's not lose giving honor to people so that people will look in us and see good so that they will not see us good, but they will see the love of Christ in us and glorify God, hopefully by coming to know him and are living for him. And that's hard. It's hard. This is a hard season. I know for some of you are a little uncomfortable right now. <laughs> um, and and, and it, it is. It's a hard thing to wrestle through. It's really interesting conversations, even in my house. It's just like, man, it's hard. But what's not hard, I don't have to choose to, li- to be dishonorable to any of them that are running. Okay? Like there's ways we can go about this and still hold our head up when, when in Hebrew says we can come confidently into the, like the throne room of Christ, if you will. Like, man, we, can, we don't have to live dishonorably in this sense, okay? So submission to those in political office is one example that Peter gives some instructions to us on how we're to live um, honorably and to glorify God. Another example here is also um, in the next few verses, starting in verse 18, it's submission to those in the workplace. He uses here uh, servants and slave and masters, but really the best context for us is really the workplace employer employee relations. But let's read that in verse 18. It says, Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. And that's hard, unjust, right? Uh, I worked at a uh, hospital in Dallas and I was uh, new there. 
on a team. We worked with heart patients. I was just, I felt like the intern, though I was an employee. I was just new. I was the newbie, right? Well, we had a weekly meeting with uh, a cardiologist that helped look over things for us. Each week, we would go over charts and things. And, um, well, our, our cardiologist for that month was a real fiery redhead that everybody seemed to know his reputation, but myself, you know, um, well, he comes in and we talk, we're talking, you know, stuff that we do work. Um, but it was political season. It actually was election season. They were, so he was really fiery. So he was spewing everything and talking. And I just kind of sit back, not say anything until he got to re- religious stuff. And then he started talking about God and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I got to say something. I don't, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> and I just, I think I said something like, I don't really agree with that. And I was like, Oh boy. And it's like, all of a sudden it's like, looks at me. Like I didn't, even, didn't even know I was there probably. Um, man. And so obviously that went to like, um, kind of third degree, um, evaluation and interrogation. And to me as to why I said that and what I believe and, you know, kind of harassing me, if you will. Anyway, so it's, I'm not complaining about that, but man, I, I was being treated unjustly, if you will, just because I didn't agree with this guy. And it went on for a few months about, man, making me do certain tasks, give me random projects just for the sake of me having to spend hours doing random things and give him a report on something he doesn't care about. He just, he just, he just didn't agree with me and he could do that and wield his power. And it was fine. So I did what I could. And, but over time, it's not like we became best buds and friends, but we, he became to respect me for trying to do good and live honorably, if you will. And I was perfect there, but I didn't know what else to do. I'm like the peon here and, you know, and, but I was like, but I had to st- had to still live in an unjust, if you will, situation. Man, that's, that's just a very minor, I know we all work in different you know, environments and even family member situations that it's tough and we're handled, you are maybe treated unjustly. But we're called to, what does it say here? Verse 18, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, though it's great if we have a good gentle boss, employer, but also to the unjust. Why? For this is a gracious thing. When mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit or reward is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure, but when you do good and suffer for it, you endure. This is a gracious thing in the sight of God. And one of, one of the, the hard things I think in life as a believer is we bear the name of Christ. Our, our next example is the submission of Christ. He, he gives us an example to follow and imitate in this life of how to live honorably and glorify God. He did that. He lived honorably and glorify God. But he was a he was like the ultimate exile, if you will, being sent here. He was treated unjustly, and he lived honorably, and he glorified God. Verse twenty one says, "For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin; neither was deceit found in his mouth." When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. Hmm. (laughs) When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed for you were straying like sheep but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. And Christ gave us an example. So another one of those like, yes, but how things is, man, how do we live honorably? Man, will we, Christ gave us an example of how he lived here, right? We can look to him and how he treated others. What, what did he do? What did he say? How did he live? And that's an example for us on how to live honorably and glorify God as he ultimately did that more significantly than, than our situations, right? What I also love is that we see Christ here as he was an example for us 
He's an example for a lot of people in the world that don't even know him, right? There's a lot of people, a lot of religions even that see Christ as a good teacher and a good prophet, somebody who did good things and, and, but not as the Lord himself, not as God son. But man, it's not just that we want to be like Christ because he's a good guy. Why was Christ who he was? It was because of the gospel. It was because of what he did for us, how he bore our sins on the cross. It says he committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live righteousness, live to righteousness. God lived honorably. Jesus lived honorably and in a way that glorified God, even to the point of him submitting himself to death on the cross, it says in Philippians 2. I mean, that's a, a surrendering. What if we, how do we live honorably, man? Like, what if we took our role? Okay, I get it. I'm an alien here. I don't know if we may have any Lecrae listeners out there. I know there's a couple out here. Um, there's a song called Aliens. I almost was going to read it, but then I'd sound like a poor rapper. So I just decided I'm not going to go there. Um, but it's, it's good. It just speaks to the nature that we're, man, we are not, this is really not our home, but it is a temporary residence for us. But we're to live honorably and glorify God here now in the midst of a world that doesn't get him and a world that really wages war against our soul, as we read actually in a previous verse. So as we close today, um, I think it's, it's important that we, I don't know, that yes, but how moment of, and how do we, how do, we do this? Um, it's hard to not be distracted by the, the politics stuff right now, but it's more than that. This is not a lesson on our conduct. Hopefully more, it's a heart check. That's what the Lord wants from us. He wants our heart, right? He wants us to do good, love others well, let people see us doing things that don't make sense so that they'll see him in us and glorify the Father in heaven, right? So that's our prayer, I guess. My prayer for us is that, man, I must need to make us some shirts that just says aliens or something. I don't know, that'd probably be weird. I don't know. Not that we need more shirts, but... Uh, but, but what if we truly learn to live that way, right? Um, this section here is going to kind of carry into next week as well as more ways that, man, we're to call to, it's almost like an instruction manual of some, man, here are just ways for us to live as aliens here in this planet. And, you know, like, though it's not our home, but how do we live it honorably and in a way that glorifies God? So uh, let me pray for us as we wrap up. And, uh, man, if you, if you, if you're one like, what is he talking about? Aliens here. I don't get that. Um, strangers, children, man, we'd love to talk to you more about Jesus Christ, who is our ultimate example of submitting to the father's will and gave giving his life to die on the cross for our sins that we may have life in him. That's where our hope is, right? We're anchored in hope that comes from Jesus. We're not anchored. Our hope's not anchored in a vote. Okay? Like, please, let's not freak out in two weeks from now. Pray. Like, let's live honorably. Okay? Like, our Lord is still in control. Right? So, like, let's live honorably. Man, what if you show up to work and they're, like, expecting you to blow up because of whatever direction things go, but you have a peace and a joy because you still know who's in control. And we're going to pray for our leaders, whoever it is, they need the Lord, right? So we need to pray. So just a challenge to us. Let me pray for us as we close. Dear Lord, Father, uh, God, we love you and we need you. Do I do pray for our nation. I pray, Lord, that you would be honored in our nation. I pray that you'd be honored in the world. And I pray that people would come to know you. I pray that those that seek to lead this country and others, Lord, would, Lord, they would first seek to, to know you and to follow you. Lord, I pray um, for our country, but not for necessarily safety and protection, but I pray, God, that we would turn to you. Lord, I pray that in droves and in thousands, Lord, people would respond to you, or they would cry out to you. God, that you would 
use elections, use economy, use just education, use us, use, use whatever you mean, need to use, want to use, choose to use, Lord, to, to glorify yourself. God, let's pray again for our church. God, I pray, help us to live honorably, Lord, in a way that glorifies you. Lord, and if there is anyone in this room that has questions about what does that mean to surrender our life to a, to a God and a Lord or to give our, the, if you will, let go of the reins of our lives and hand them over to our God, to Jesus, Lord, who, who died on the cross for our sins, that we can have eternity with him. If there's someone that needs to know that, Lord, I pray that you would move and stir in their heart and Holy Spirit convict that just in a way that just wants them to talk about it, Lord, and that they would talk about it someone today or someone with someone they know or that they would respond to that. Lord, because ultimately we're not here to just gather and meet and talk and for you to just hear us, Lord, but we're here to make a difference, to be a light in the world. Lord, I pray that we would leave today light shining brighter, Lord, and that we would shine unto the world and that they would see our good works and they would glorify our Father in heaven because of who they see in us. Father, forgive us when we fall short. God, we love you and we praise you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name.